want to mention again about our uh, Bible lesson online. And I hope we are all have enrolled now. Uh, and some have completed the very first, I think there's four lessons in the first uh, part of it, where you'll, um, then you take a test and they'll send you a score. Who's all uh, completed the very first, uh, uh, sent their test already in? One, two, three, four. Well, well, well Nana, you raise your hand. You're, turn her here, Nada. Okay. <laughs> Nana's got, actually, Nana's already finished three. She's taken three tests already. And uh, she's working, I think, on her fourth one now. And so uh, uh, let's don't put it off. Let's study. Uh, and it seems like I've been saying it for a long time that we are to study. And, and, and we try to have Wednesday night Bible study to study. And we are to all study. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're to study, and it says to, that, you, that you might be approved. That's to be approved of God, that God will approve of to use you. And if we do not study as a workman working at it, then we will not be used of God. He said that we have to study to show ourselves approved. And it ought to be the same thing here. We shouldn't lower our standards. We ought to do what, what God, the Bible says, let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. And so if God requires us to study to be used, we cannot undermine him and go around him and say we're going to, use, we're going to have you go ahead and be used anyhow, whether God is or not. We're not supposed to do that. If God uh, doesn't want you to be used, if you won't study, then we shouldn't use you if you won't study. Does that make sense? And so that's why we're going to make it where that uh, the staff, those that are here to be used of God, needs to study. And if you refuse to study, we, the, the first time, we're just not going to pay you this next payday. If you haven't turned in a lesson and got your score back, grade back. All right? That's fair. If it's not fair, then we're having to accuse God of not being fair. For God says, study to show yourself a approved. To be approved to be used of God, we have to study. And so to be uh, approved to be in the ministry here, to be a part of it, you need to study. Now, that's the first time. We just won't pay you. Well, uh, after a while, if you don't get paid, you're going to get laid off. We're not going to have workers trying to work that we don't pay. Amen? And so we're just not going to use you. But it's not that hard. Matter of fact, I've tried to make it real easy. I located the school, got it where it's free. I have worked out with um, Prince and uh, Shanabelle and some that I've went and I've already printed off your answer sheet for the first one and then a, a sheet where you can put your great, um, answers on and all you got to do is just take a picture of it and send it back. The lesson itself, you'll get it in an email. You can read it right off your cell phone. You read your lesson. You go to the uh, office and ask for a copy of the test. And we will make the test available for everyone as you uh, comes to it. So it's very simple. You get your test, fill it all out. Now, in order to get the test, you have to sh prove that they sent you the test. They'll send you the test on your cell phone. You don't have to print it. Just come show the office that you've got the they sent you an email and we'll get the we'll print the test. I've already bought two bundles of paper, 500 pieces each, a thousand. I took my money and I went and bought it so they'll have plenty of paper to print it off for you. I'm going to be buying some ink this week to put plenty of ink for the printer and we're going to do uh, just about everything for you except study. But you need to put something into it to study. Uh, before we go into our John, I want to turn over to Proverbs and let me ask the technicians upstairs if you'll just go ahead and put it, Proverbs chapter 1 through 7 on the screen. It won't be on my PowerPoint. You'll have to close that for a minute. And Proverbs chapter 1, 1 through 7, and you that have your Bibles, turn there and I want us to look at it. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. Are we working on it? Everybody turn there in your Bible, Proverbs chapter 1, 
And verse 1. Can y'all see that? I don't I can make it a lot bigger, huh? All right. Look, uh, follow along with me. Look at here. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instructions, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive instructions and wisdom, justice, judgment, and equality, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall obtain unto wisdom and counsel, wise counsel. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark saying. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but the fools despise wisdom and instruction. Notice it says that fools despise wisdom and instruction. And, and like I said, we've made it really easy for you to become wise. All you have to do is put a little bit of study in it. Now, I want to also now jump over to um, verse 20 to um, verse 20, 20 through 26. Same chapter, Proverbs 1, verse 20 through 26. What did y'all do? You turned your computer off? If you had a book, all you got to do is turn a page. All right. Wisdom. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom cries without. Now, that is saying that wisdom, the knowledge, the wisdom that God wants you to have, it cries out. It's not like you got to go hunt it down. You got to work for it. You got to pay for it. No, it's trying. Wisdom is constantly trying to get into you. And all through life, wisdom is trying its best to gain. The only reason why you're not wise, you fought it off. You refused it. You rejected it. And only a fool will do that. And like I say, it's not like something we've got to really work hard to gain. God wants you to be wise. He wants you to have knowledge. And he has tried and tried and tried to get that wisdom to you. Wisdom cries without she utters her voice in the streets. She's everywhere. She cries in the chief places of concourse, in the opening of the gates, in the city of the, uh, she utters her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you, because I have called and you have refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regardeth. But ye have said it not at all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. Verse 26, and I also will laugh at your calamities, and I will mock when fear comes. And so uh, the Bible makes it very clear, and it's true. I, I see it all the time, that wisdom is there, knowledge is there, and it, it's working. You don't have to work. It's trying, trying hard. And the only reason why we don't get it is because we reject it. We refuse. We mock at it. We laughed at it. We, we, we disregard it. And so what will happen, it will bring your destruction. When you see people that are homeless and people that are all doped up on drugs and they're wasted, uh, they lived in the same world we lived in. And they had probably sometimes even greater opportunity than others had. And, the, and most of them were that way because they were just fools. They rejected what God is trying to do for them and the wisdom. And so uh, here we give you an opportunity to study a college Bible course. And it starts off simple and it builds on. It gives you, it, it's not hard at the beginning. You just take it. And uh, it's an open book test. Uh, what you can do is if it asks you a question, um, it'll say, blank, create the heavens and the earth. And then in your lesson, at the beginning, it'll say, uh, Genesis 1-1 says, God created the heaven and earth. And you look at your test question. Blank created the heavens and earth. You look back over here, and you see God. And you put God there. 
that simple, amen? But now you've learned that we didn't come about by monkeys in evolution, amen? Because God created the heavens and the earth. We're already a little bit wise. We're a lot wiser than a lot of professors in college that thinks they came from a monkey. You know, uh, somebody said if you believe in evolution, then that is the best way to make a monkey out of yourself and make a fool out of yourself. God created it. Now, let's go to our John chapter 16, all right? All of that this uh, while ago was just extra, okay? A little extra, but you need to study. Next time I come up here, I'm going to ask you again. Who's took the first test? Who's completed? How many did we have? Six? Was it six of them? And then next time, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, 20. Amen? Everybody's hands should be up. We've already completed the first test. All right. John chapter 16. Let's go, Lord, word of prayer. Lord God, we pray you'll be with us the next few moments. God, I pray you'll speak to our hearts. Lord, help me as the, uh, the teacher for this chapter in John. Give me wisdom, knowledge. Lord, help me to be able to expound these scriptures correctly. And Lord, I pray that God, that we'll all grow a little bit in wisdom and knowledge. And God, that we'll put effort and open our ears and not rejecting the truths that you have for us. And God, I pray you'll just anoint me and fill me with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. John 16, verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. Now, he's referring back to the previous chapter. You remember chapter 15? Jesus talked about, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. If they hated me, they're going to hate you. And he talks about how we will have trials, we'll have troubles. But we can be sure, no matter what we go through, God is always there, never to leave us nor forsake us. And so he says, these things have I spoken to you, that you should not be offended. You should not be worried about it. You should not be so uh, uh, surprised even about it, that it's going to happen. That there is going to become persecution. And when it comes, you should already be prepared, ready for it, because God, Jesus told you that it was coming. These things have I written unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Or we can say they're going to put you out of the church. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he does God service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father, nor me. Now, notice chapter 15, it talked about the world. We're to be separate from the world. The world hates us. The world hates the Father. The world hates us. We're not of the world, and we're to abstain from the world. But now he's going to move on and tell us not only is the world going to hate you, the world's going to pressure you, but professing people that says they're Christian, religious people, people that are in the church, uh, people that thinks they're doing God's will, thinks they're serving God when they are to kill you or to persecute you. And uh, this has happened all throughout history. And, and there's, you know, there's been times through history where it's kind of went up and down, uh, the persecution of Christians. Uh, right, uh, there was a, there the Roman Empire was ruling the world and uh, they were a, a, a great, persecution where they were they all the apostles except for John that was exiled on the island of Patmos they were all executed, burned at the stake, thrown in the lion's den, ripped asunder and all, uh, many of the Christians were hunted down and killed. You remember Paul uh, when he was Saul that was his job to hunt down Christians and kill them until he got converted and became the apostle. Now they were being persecuted and it was Paul was of the Jewish uh, uh, leadership, you know, he had been educated and he had been commissioned by the, the religious leaders to hunt down Christians, thought he was doing a work of God. He tells us in his testimony that he thought he was serving God and he had a great zeal for God, he said, to hunt down Christians. And then there was a period of time where uh, the Constantinum 
the emperor of Rome, uh, was going to battle, and he saw a vision, he says, of a crucifixion and a uh, symbol of Christianity. And he said, made a commitment, if I could win this battle under that symbol, I will declare Christianity the state religion. And so sure enough, he won his battle. He came back, and they stopped persecuting Christians, and they set it up that Christianity would be the religion of Rome. And so what Constantino did, he took his uh, officers, some of them, and he designated them as priests, as leaders of the new religion. And these priests was ordered to go out and Christianize the world. And they was to Christianize it by force. Uh, they go into country after country, and they would force you to become a Christian, to be baptized. Every baby had to be baptized. Everybody had to be baptized. The Muslim, they kind of refused. Muslims didn't want to become Christians. So what they did, they killed them. And we have in history what we call the Great Crusades, where hundreds and thousands and thousands of Muslims, the whole entire communities completely annihilated by Constantinus' new religion that he called Christian. And of course, he was the emperor of Rome, and that new religion became known as the Roman Universal Church. The whole church, the whole world had to be in it. And the word universal was Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church. And they went all over. Now, not only did the Muslim refuse to accept this, and they were slaughtered by the thousands, of, but true Christianity, true born-again believers, taught that you get baptized after you receive Christ. And baptism is a picture of your salvation. When you get saved, what happens, you're spiritually born again. You are spiritually baptized. You're ducked. You're, you die. You're that old sinful nature, the person that drank and smoked and cursed and lied. He's dead. He's buried. And then a new person is resurrected, born again, a new person that lives like after God. And baptism, being emerged under water, is a picture of that death, that spiritual death that took place. Being brought up out of the water was a picture of your new birth, being born again. And identifying also with the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Christian taught this from the time that uh, uh, the, Jesus' time, right on the apostles, the Catholic Church, when they came about, they said that everybody, by law, had to be baptized. And babies had to be baptized. And so now they ruled the, the whole known world was the Rome at that time. Rome was the, the world at that time. They, the others were being forced, and they were traveling. They came. Uh, Rome is in what country? Italy. And then they spread into Spain. And, of course, to Spain, the Catholics, they, they went out, and they finally came to the Philippines, did they not? And when the Roman Catholic Church came to the Philippines, what happened? Everybody had to get baptized. And, of course, the Muslims here in the Philippines didn't like that neither, and there was a lot of Muslims that got killed. And then, finally, the Muslim killed uh, the leader of the Spaniards that came here. Who was he? Magellan. But then... But this happened, but the true Christians, they went in hiding. Where did they go in hiding from the Catholic Church? Anybody know where they went hiding at so they wouldn't be killed? They went into the catacombs. That was the underground cemetery under Rome, just tunnels and tunnels, and they went down there to live in the catacombs. And while the Christians were underground, we call that period of time in history the Dark Ages. We call it the Dark Ages because there was nothing on above the ground but superstitious, medieval superstitious, Roman Catholic superstitious, and, and all the evil that was going on, the witches being, uh, people being accused of witches and burned at the stake and all kinds of stuff. It wasn't until the Christians came out of the catacombs after many years and they invented the printing press that the Bible began to be printed and when the Bible fled through, we had then is the great uh, uh, falling away, the Reformation, where the Catholic Church began to break apart, and the Methodist, Presbyterian, 
uh, Episcopalian, all these different groups came out after the printing press was printed and they started having light came on the world again. You had Constantine try to declare Christianity. We'll stop our persecution. But then little by little, when the Roman Catholic Church came in full blown, the persecution started back again. And the Roman Catholic Church declared that it was illegal to baptize a person the second time. The babies all got baptized by force. Everybody had to be baptized. Grown-ups, anybody had to be baptized. But later on, when they got saved, they heard the gospel, and they gave their life to Jesus, they got born again, they went down to the church to be baptized after their salvation. Well, that would mean they would have gotten baptized twice. First time Roman Catholic, now second time as a Christian. That became a law, and it was, it was a death penalty. It was a death penalty if you were to be baptized twice. And they call that law Anabaptist. An Anabaptist would be put to death. Anna means to re, redo it, rebaptize. And so the people that were called Anabaptists, and that's when they went into hiding because all of us had the death uh, sentence on them, and they had to go down in the catacombs to hide. But then when they came out, they were known as Anabaptists, but the word Anna eventually got short and dropped off, and it was just simply Baptist. And that's how we got our names. We did not name ourselves. Nobody picked the name Baptist. It was the Catholic Church that named Christians as Baptists. And so uh, th then there was, came a time when the Reformation took place, and you had people like Spurgeon and, and George Mueller and all these great preachers in Europe began to enlighten and uh, enlightened started happening, university started being developed in college. And th there was a time that it seems like the persecution kind of went down a little bit. When America got established and Christianity just fled across the United States in the early days, it seemed like uh, everybody had a Bible, uh, every public school taught about Jesus. But then, little by little, that persecution came back again. And we have it uh, now, today, they, uh, they passed laws in the United States that you cannot have a Bible in school. It's against the law to take your Bible to school. It's against the law to pray in school. It's against the law to silent pray in school. If you bow your head, you could get arrested. That's how in America today. And there's a real strong hostility towards Christianity today. And Jesus said, they will put you out of the synagogue. Yea, times will come that whosoever killeth you shall think he does God's service. And these things they will do unto you because they have not known the Father. Now he's talking about religious people. He says they're going to do this because why? They don't know the Father. They're not saved. They've never known Christ. They've never known God. They just think they are. They've got a form of man-made religion. Now we move on to verse 4. But these things have I told you. That when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. For these things I said unto you from the, at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me, whether go is thy. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, follow on what he says. He says, I'm telling you the truth. That he was talking about how that I didn't tell you this before because I was with you. And you know, when Christ is with us, there's joy, there's peace, there's happiness. He come to give life and give it more abundant. And Christ was actually with them. And while he was with them, he, he fed the multitude, he raised the dead, he healed the sick, sick, he taught them, he loved them, he cared for them. And he, everything was wonderful while they walked. And they, they loved him. And they were excited about serving and living and walking with Christ. But now he's fixing to leave. And he won't be with them like that no more. And so... He's going to go to the Father. And he says, now I'm going to leave you. And in other words, uh, when he says, uh, they didn't ask me. You didn't ask me why, where I was going. Or why, they, the reason why they didn't ask, they were so worried about themselves. Man, he's not going to be here no more. What are we going to do? 
Why is this going to happen to us? And they were all fretting and worried and fearful that he just said. But he says, look, you should ask me because I can tell you it's, it's better for you. Because if I do not go away, then I couldn't send a comforter to you. And you see, while Jesus is here in the flesh, he can only be in one place. He, if he's in our church and he's here with us, he's not in the church in Longapo. He's not in the church in Manila. He's here. And the only way he can be with all of us all over the world is if he sends the Spirit, the Holy Spirit back. And so Christ, the physical body of Christ, Jesus, went to sit on the right hand of the Father. And that's another uh, thing to our benefit because what he's doing there, he's acting as a lawyer in our defense. And so we, when we sin, the Bible says we have an advocator, Jesus Christ, our lawyer, sitting there before the judge. Satan is called the accuser. The Satan will get you to sin, and he accuses us before the Father. Oh, did you see what he said? Do you see what he thought? Do you see what he did? Jesus is there said, no, I paid for that sin. Look at my hands. Look at the hole in my side. I shed my blood for that sin. That sin's paid for. And he's there constantly on the right hand of the Father as our advocate. Now he sends the Holy Spirit that's here as our comforter. He's the one that's going to go through us through the valley of the shadow of death. He's the one that's going to be with us through any persecution and trials. And so now we, can, uh, we do not have to fear. We do not have to fret because he's with us. But because I have said these things unto you, verse 6, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And so now we can have the Holy Spirit come and dwell within us and live within us and give us that joy and happiness and peace. Verse 8. And when he has come, he will reprove the world. Talking about the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they have not believed, not believe they because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged and so he says that uh, it's uh, that he he will prove the world of sin notice the word is not sins but sin you see he doesn't reprove us of smoking and drinking or stealing and lying because you see any smart thinking man knows that murder, rape, drunkenness, drugs, they know this wrong. What we need to know is that we have a sinful nature that causes us to sin. And the Holy Spirit convicts us, reproves us that I have a sinful nature. I was born in sin. I lie and I steal and I do these things because of my very nature. And the Holy Spirit is to convict me of sin. The sin nature. And then uh, the thing that the, the greatest sin is that whenever uh, I'm introduced to the answer, what's the answer to my problem? The answer to my sin nature is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to give my life to Jesus, and he will create a new heart in me. And I, Jesus said in John 3, verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And that's what I was to believe. I believe that Christ can give me a new birth. I believe if I receive him in my heart, in my life, I'm a new creature. I've been born again. And so the, the, the great sin is that I reject it. When I reject that, I remain in my sin as a sinner. And I will continue to live a life of sin because that's my sin nature. But I don't get saved from smoking and then later on I got to get saved from drinking and no I, no I don't try to rehabilitate each one what I do is I go right down to the roots I get saved very nature that sin nature and by getting born again I become a new person that old person is dead and gone and so uh, he talks about how he come the Holy Spirit comes and then look at um, verse 12 now <laughs> Verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, 
the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Now, he's talking about the Holy Spirit coming. He's going to show us truth. But he says, I cannot, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. He says, you, you, you know, he speaks to us through the Bible. And the Bible has many, many things to say to us. Jesus Christ has many things to say to us. But when you pick our Bible up, we can't bear it. We can't hear it. We cannot understand it. But he says that when the Holy Spirit comes, then he will teach us and we will understand the truth. And so in order to understand this Bible, to understand Jesus, we have to have the Holy Spirit living within us. The Bible says the natural man, the man that does not have the Holy Spirit, the natural man understands not the things of God and neither can he know them. And so uh, we have to have the Holy Spirit. But if you're giving your life to Christ, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You call upon Jesus, surrender your life to him. He, the Holy Spirit comes within you and he becomes your teacher and he teaches you all things. Look at verse 14 now. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. And all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. And so uh, we have that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to us the mysteries and the great truths as we study God's Word. But we need to study. Did I not tell you that the Bible says study to show yourself approved? Study to show yourself approved to have the Holy Spirit teach you. In order to be approved that the Holy Spirit will teach you, you have to study. And you read your Bible, you study it, and you have the Holy Spirit that becomes your teacher, that enables you to understand the truth. And then verse 16. A little while, and you shall not see me again. And a little while, you shall see me because I go to the Father. Then says some of the disciples among themselves, what is this that he says unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he says? A little while. We cannot tell what he says. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto him, do you inquire among yourselves of that I said, a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be, have sorrows, but the sorrows shall be turned into joy. Now, what is Jesus saying? That in, just in a little bit, not, not too many more days now, Christ is going to be crucified. You see me. And then a little bit, you won't see me. But then a little bit, you will see me again. Now, he describes that period of time from the time that he departs, dies on the cross and departs, goes to heaven. He describes that time from the time he will come back and we will see him again. He describes it as a little time. It's just a short time. But God, I mean, it's been almost 2,000 years of our time. But that is only a very short time when you compare it to all eternity for thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions and millions of years of eternity that we will spend with Christ. And so he's saying that a little time, just a, and he says just endure, just be patient. You know, we talk about, you know, problems comes in our life, persecution, people hates us, we have all, and then we, sometimes we cry out and say, oh God, why, why is this happening to me? You know what he says? Just a little while. Just, just be patient. It's only a little while. A little while I'll be back and you'll be with me. And so uh, he's already told us, don't cry out and ask God why, because he's already told us. He done told us that this life is going to be trouble. This life they're going to persecute you. And he goes on and explains that more. Look at uh, verse 21. A woman, when she is in travail has sorrow because her hours come. 
But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the, the anguish. For joy that a man is born into the world. Ye know, therefore, ye now, therefore, have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man take it for you. Now, remember, the people that are present, the people that are actually there with Jesus when he speaks, all of them will be crucified, burned at the stake, thrown into lion's den. When we go through our little bit of trouble, our little bit of problem, and we cry out to God, God, why? But those people, they weren't crying out to God, why? But they, God had already told them. They're in this, it's like a, a woman that's buried. You know what a woman says right when she's fixing to deliver while the baby's coming? You know what she says? Why, God? That's what she says, amen? But just seconds later, the baby is put in her arm and she smiles and the joy and the happiness. She's forgot a few minutes ago the pain and suffering that she felt. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. This short time that we will live this life, it will be like a woman in travail. It will be sorrowful and pain, but the joy that we will receive. But now if we go through this life trying to get all the pleasures that we can give, we fall in love with pleasure, we get alcohol and sex and movies and, and, and parties and, and we just live it up, riches and wealth and nice homes and everything, and we live it up. Jesus said, when you receive your reward here on earth, you have received your reward, that's it. There's nothing to look for in heaven. But when we are here serving God, being faithful, enduring whatever comes our way, keeping trust and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, our reward will be great in heaven. And the joy will be like the little baby being placed in a mother's arm and the joy that she will receive. And she will have that joy forever, ever after. And the pain and the suffering before that joy is very, very short time. Verse 23, and, and the day shall ask, in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hereunto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. And so uh, he's talking about how that, that when we act like I don't need Christ, I don't have to ask Christ nothing. I can stand on my own. I can do my own thing. Then, we, then there's trouble that's going to happen. But when I come to the Father and I depend on Him and I ask, I shall receive and your joy may be full. Verse 25, these things have I spoken to you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. And so he's talking to them before we got saved, before Christ came into our lives, Proverbs or mystery. The, uh, when we sit in church and we heard the preacher preach, it sounds strange. It sounds confusing. It sounds like a mystery. But now when we receive Christ, when Christ comes into our heart and our lives, then he reveals and we can understand the truth. We can understand things we could not understand before once we have Christ. It is Christ. And then verse 26, at that day, you should ask in my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and I'm come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. And the disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thy plenty and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee, but this we believe, that thy came is forth from God. Now, actually, it's kind of hard to quite understand it, but what the apostles actually say is that we don't need to ask you anything. We now have arrived. We now know everything. Now we understand. We, we're smart. We, we got it all down. Notice what he says after they, they say all this. 
He says, verse 31, Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Notice the question mark there. Do you now believe? Now are you smart? Now do you know everything? Now you have arrived? Verse 32, Behold, the hour cometh, yes, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, and every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. He says, you, you're, you have arrived, you, you're spiritual, you're, you know it all, but here in a few minutes, they're going to come and arrest me, and you're, Peter, you're going to deny me. Y'all are going to all run and scatter. And see what he's trying to say, like, when we depend on ourselves, when we think we have arrived, when we think we're smart, that's when we're in for a fall. The reason why Peter denied Christ three times is because he had boasted as if he knew it all, had arrived. Verse 33, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. And so he says that I've spoken to you, don't think you've really, you're above everything and you have, you're smart and you know it all. There are going to be troubles. There are going to be persecution. You're going to fall. But I've spoken these to them that you get your peace in Jesus Christ. And Paul said that he's nothing. I'm a chief of sinners, he said. The Isaiah said, I'm a, wor I'm a worm. I'm a man that lives among unclean lips. I'm, I'm nothing. And it's only when people thought they were nothing that God could use them. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. In the world ye shall be, have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And so as long as we think we can go through this world on our own wisdom, our own smart, our own ability, we're going to have troubles. But when we walk, stay with Christ, we have great peace. And But in closing, let me say, you cannot have this peace apart from Jesus Christ. You need to make sure you have Jesus into your heart. You know, there's different religions all over the world, and all of them think that they have arrived, that they're it. And, uh, but we need to understand it's not religion. You can be a Baptist, a member of this church, and die and go to hell. Because it is not Baptist, it's not membership, it's not baptism, it's not confession, it's not your giving. It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's the sweetest name I know. He's the answer to everything. And it's only when I empty myself and I come to Christ and admit and realize I am a sinner. I am nothing. I'm wicked and sinful. And I cry out to the Lord, Lord I can do nothing but trust in you. And we surrender and we rely on Christ. We put our faith in Christ, trusting in him. And then he performs a miracle in our lives. John 1, 12, But as many as received him, the Lord Jesus Christ, to them gave he power or miracle to become a child of God. When you put your faith in Christ, in Christ alone. Now, we have lots of people that claims to be Jesus Christ today. Lots of people have a, a, a Jesus Christ of their own imagination, of their own making. They'll say, well, I, I believe this way. I think this way. No, we have to put our faith and trust in the Jesus Christ of this Bible. See, Jesus is the living word. This is the written word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was God. And so our Bible is actually God in written form. And so Jesus said, uh, study the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But they or they will speak of me. This is Jesus Christ. And if I'm going to put my faith and trust in Christ, i got to put my faith and trust in what he says and what he teaches. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you and we love you. And God, I pray that, Lord, that you'll take something that was said and that as we go through this gospel of John, I pray that we will all learn and grow in wisdom and knowledge and truth. And God, I pray that, Lord, by chance that there's somebody among us that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God, I pray that today will be the day of their salvation. Now will be the time that they will accept Christ 
and experience that wonderful salvation. God, we thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Tayo po tayo lahat. Pastor mentioned about the person na nanganganak. Ang tawag doon nun, pag na, bago ka manganak, masakit ang tawag doon, ikaw ay nagli-labor. And after that labor, ang tawag doon, birth pains, pag nakita mo na yung baby, yung blessing, wow, what a joy. But the same thing din po sa buhay ng isang Kristiyano. In a perfect world, there will be no problem, no discouragement, No tribulation. But unfortunately, we are living in a world na hindi po perfect. So, usually we're gonna sing, I surrender all. But tonight, we're gonna sing, To the Work. Ano yun, To the Work? Ano yung kanta na yun, To the Work? Ang ginagawa ng babaeng nanganganak, Brother Joseph, you come up here. To the Work. Nagpupush niya. Shh, shh, kailangan ng work. So as Christian, we also need to work. We don't work to be saved. We work because we are saved. Amen? Naintindi natin yun? Tayo po nagpapagal sapagkat we are looking and anticipating the blessed hope, the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we sing this, Well, let's sing this with all our hearts. Alam mo to, preacher? Alam mo to? All right. We're going to call Brother Sarel. And when I sing this, if the Lord press in your heart to have a covenant sa kanya, Lord, I'm going to work no matter what. It's going to be hard. It's going to be discouraging. But katulad na nanganganak, birth pains lang yan. Pagkatapos niyan, you'll see the, the fruit. You'll see, you see heaven. You see the Lord. You see all the bliss because He's faithful. Amen. So, Brother Sarel, we're going to sing this. The Lord press in your heart, you come, you pray dito, pwede po. Shall we sing po to the word?
before we end our service, we want to acknowledge yung ating visitor, si Tinian Timaan, and of course, si General Gabriel. And I forget the name po ng kasama niyo, but you are welcome and we're so blessed to have you tonight. Tayo po'y manalangin. Tawagin natin si, ano ba? Tawagin natin si, uh, let's see. Pastor Ted na lang. You want to close in a word of prayer? <laughs> Amen. Let's, uh, when we dismiss, stick around a little bit and fellowship and get to know one another, okay? All right, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your love. And we thank you for the love that we have here at Subic Bay Baptist Church. Thank you for our visitors tonight, and we thank you for each one that's here to study the Word of God together. And God, we pray that you'll be with us now as we dismiss. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amiel, Lance, youth po, yung youth po, may last practice po tayo ngayon, yung mga youth. Ay, basta practice. Go. Ay na, may mic ah. Si Ana may mic. May mic dyan. Mag mic na sila. <laughs> Oo nga. Kung may mic ganyan si Ana.
Hello, hello. the face that I see in the mirror, the one I want others to see, do I show in the way that I walk in my life, the love that you've given to me, my heart desires to be like you.